people to deliver them from the bondage that they so rightfully deserve to be in. This Athenia was, it says, Caleb's younger brother. Of course, if you remember back in Joshua, Joshua's uh, friend, his, his cohort was Caleb, and they uh, conquered. In fact, they were the ones that, that drove the children of Israel into the promised land. And this Athenio, he was a, uh, in fact, his name means the Lion of God. He was an extremely a courageous young man. In fact, you see him earlier on, I believe, in chapter 1, where it says, uh, verse 11, Then from there he went against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir was formerly Kirath Sefer. And verse 12, And Caleb said, The one who attacks Kirath Sefer and captures it, I will... It, it will be given him, my daughter, Ashash, for a wife. Othaniel, there he is, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, captured it. So he gave him his daughter, Ashash, for a wife. So this was a young man who captured the city and he got a wife as a result of that. And so this man was a valiant young man. In fact, it says that he was, uh, he, his name means the Lion of God. So God equipped him to be a judge. He, he allowed the Spirit of God in the Old Testament. It's not like the New Testament. In the New Testament, the Spirit of God in, indwells every believer. And so if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you have, you received at the time that you believe the Holy Spirit. He indwells you. He empowers you to do everything that God has called you to do. There is nothing that God desires of you that you cannot do because he has given you his Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, there were just select people that the Spirit of God would rest on. And, and we see here that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in 2A. In 2B, we see that God empowered him. He empowered him to do the job that God called him to do. And God is still doing that. Listen, when he calls you, he will always equip you to do what he's called you to do. You don't have to worry. If you feel powerless to do something, then maybe God has not called you to do that. But whatever he has called you to do, he will also equip you to do what he's called you to do. And that is a guarantee. So he's equipped him, and then he's empowered him. And that brings us to verse 11. It says, verse 10 again, The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. When he went out to, to war, the Lord gave Cushan, Rishathim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. Now, if you remember from last week, this, uh, it was the Lord who gave, in fact, it says in verse 8, then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel so that he sold them into the hands of Cushan, Rishathim. So God sold them because of their rebellion. They cry out and God does what? God delivers them. God is the one that is active in this whole scene in the book of Judges. God is always active. And it says here, when he went out to war, the Lord gave Cushan, Rishathim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hands so that they prevailed over Cushan, Rishathim. And then verse 11 says, then the land had rest. 40 years. That's our point number three. God gives rest. God gives rest. Does anybody need God's rest this morning? I mean, do you really? Do you know that his rest is available? 
So how do you get it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Jesus says in the New Testament, Come unto me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will do what? I will give you rest. So most of us are not experiencing God's rest because we're not taking God's invitation to come to him. Our problems seem to be overwhelming us because we're spending too much time looking at our problems as opposed to looking at our God. Jesus still gives the invitation, come. Come unto me, all ye who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Goes on to say, take my yoke upon me and learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find what? Rest. Unto your souls. God continues to give rest. God responds to the cries of his children. God sends a deliverer, a redeemer to his people when they cry out. And then it says that they experience rest for 40 years. Now, don't forget, they were in bondage as a result of their own disobedience for how many years? Eight years. God hears their cries. He sends a deliverer. The deliverer delivers them and they have rest for 40 years. Look at verse 12. Now the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. God's people rebelled once again. Is that cycle? This I don't know what to say. They, it's, it says the sons of Israel again. Put your name in there. Yeah. How many of us have prayed the Lord, if you get me out of this one, prayers? And you find yourself doing the same things over and over. Children of Israel look a whole lot like us, doesn't it? This ought to grieve our hearts as we look at this pattern, as we evaluate our own lives and ask ourselves the question, how did I get here? I was cool. Two months and then I slipped up and find myself drawn right back to pornography. I was clean for a year. Now I find that I am right back doing drugs again. This relationship failed and I said, Lord, you my husband. And then Mr. Wonderful came along. And I, I forgot. I wanted the relationship so much that I, I pursued him more than I pursued you. And here I am. Again. I said I was going to stop being dishonest. But it just seemed so natural. Lord, forgive me this time, Lord, if you get me out of this one. I promise you, Lord. 
I'm going to be honest. As if God doesn't know your heart. I know that person at work, they're my co-worker, and we just friends, and, but you know what? I, I find that I kind of like him. I like her, and, and I know she likes me, and I know he likes me, and so I, I know nothing can come of it. So I'm going to just play around with it. Again, See, the problem is when we read this text, most of us think about the children of Israel and we shake our heads at the children of Israel and, and forget that it is in us. We still have this sin nature. This, this, this cycle, these cycles we can go through in our own lives if we forget our relationship. If our relationship with the Lord is not a priority in our lives, then we will drift away. It's going And if you're not careful, it will be you rebelling against God once again. And Othenio, let him be the son of Kenaz, died. <laughs> After the deliverer died, 40 years of rest and then they go back into those same cycles once again it says now the sons of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord so the Lord strengthened Eglon the king of Moab against Israel now Israel is God's people So it says the Lord did what? He strengthened them. They ordinarily wouldn't have the strength to overcome Israel because Israel are God's chosen people. And listen, now when you got God on your side, listen, that is, you, you win. When you got God on your side. But when God is against you, and listen, don't think that because you sing the songs of Zion and because you come to church on Sunday, All of the health, wealth, prosperity preachers, they can't preach the book of Judges because it, it, it shows God as a God who allows things to happen in our lives to discipline us. To draw us back to our relationship with him. What does it take for us to learn that we don't have to follow these cycles? So the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And he gathered to himself the sons of Ammon and Amalek, and he went and defeated Israel, and they possessed the city of palm trees. And this is the sad part. Point five, verse 14. God releases his people into the hands of the enemy. The sons of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. Now let's just reverse this. They're in bondage for how many years? Eight. Eight years. They cry out to God. God hears their cries. God sends a deliverer. God gives the deliverer his spirit to judge them. And then God gives them rest. For how many years? Forty years. Athenio dies in 
And it says that, and they did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord again. And now they're in bondage for 18 years. So look, the, the, the book of Judges covers a span of about 300 years. And we see these cycles. <laughs> what, what, what will it take for us to get to a place where we're totally submitted to God? What, what will it take? Do you think that, that God just takes delight 